Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Chevy Show. This is what I'm going to call Black in Thailand Part 3. Yay, part number 3. Um, if you want to look for Part 2 and Part 1, go and look up this other channel I got called Sit Up Guy. It's an exercise channel I do in Thailand. Um, it's about two or three years old, I think. And anyway, like every year, I did an episode where I just called it Black in Thailand. You know, just documenting my experiences and travels and shit. This is like the... Uh, my fourth year coming here, you know, same place, same apartment and everything, and I love the place. It's it's very fucking comfortable, and I've, I've grown accustomed to it, and uh, more of the same shit. So search for Black in Thailand, sit up guy, or shimmy show, or some shit, and you'll see me drinking uh, fruit shakes and whatever, and just talking about various aspects of uh, Thailand life, because I love it here. It's very, I highly recommend it, highly recommend it. Today's show is, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not roasting today, I'm in very much of a, I'm in, I'm in like a normal mood, you know, I, I don't want motherfuckers to think that, uh, I'm always like in some angry, argumentative, just on a motherfucker's ass kind of thing, you know, I'm, I'm like 99% chill 99% of the time, you know what I'm saying, it's just that, that one or one and a half percent of the time the motherfuckers really, really want to test me, that's when they're going to hear the lion roar, so realize I'm just a regular chilled out motherfucker, just like Snoopy on the motherfucking doghouse or whatever. I don't know if this is an officially licensed uh, Charles Schultz product, you know. Schultz like Golden Real Ivory Blossom, OJ, JDP, ICAC, and Indian Country, Dorian Peters, and all that shit. And I talk about that shit on every episode, but I mean, not for real. Um, Thailand has a lot of like clothing. I mean, I literally come here with a backpack. Um... Hardly no clothes, no shoes, no nothing. You don't really need much to come here with because everything you fucking need is here. Like, literally everything. And it's probably much better priced, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Thailand's a great value. That, that's what I like to say. Thailand is a really, really great value. You get a lot of value for your money. You know, you can come here with almost nothing and come out with a whole suitcase full of clothes, custom-made, tailored suits, you know, all kinds of great nutrition, and performance enhancing drugs you can't buy in America, BCAA powder at 9.7 and shit. And uh, let's just look at some of the shit I have on the table here. Well, these might be, you can find these in some Spanish stores in America, little lady finger bananas. These are actually what real bananas fucking look like and what they, they're so fucking sweet and everything. They're not like the American GMO modified fucking foot long wiener schnitzel sized bananas. They still have flavor. You know, that's what real bananas should look like most of the time but today this is kind of like a food episode yo so sawadika assalamu alaikum and all that good shit i'm gonna go through what i just purchased at the night market here and uh i spent well i only went there with 200 baht in my pocket which is like nothing that's like currently the current exchange rate that's six dollars and 20 cents okay and that's like splurging. This is usually what I would spend on two people but tonight i'm not just i'm pigging out because i had a huge workout and whatever so um, oh, side note, before I go into the food thing here, I want to do this here, okay? Now, on my table here, I have, I went back, I made a, I doubled back and I got two fruit shakes, okay? These are 25 bucks each, which works out to, um, uh, what is that? $1.60 for both of them. So they're 80 cents each, right? Uh, mango, this one's mango, pot, what is it? Mango, banana. And this one is mango, banana, strawberry with something. They're, they're delicious, you know, they're fucking delicious. I usually have like three or four of these fuckers a day, right? But I got a lot of food, so I got two shakes. Because I'm going to, you know, eat a lot of stuff here right now to load up for uh, my time-restricted eating. I'm going to put some BCAA powder inside of them, too. And I can eat all this shit I'm going to show you and still retain my six-pack abs, people. Still going to retain them six-pack abs, you know what I'm saying? Look at the cut and the definition, nigga. Yeah. So, I'm still trying to lose that extra fucking flab from when I was a fat boy, you know, like 10 years ago and shit. But, I'm doing all this to show you that you can eat healthy, you can eat good, and you can eat a large volume of food if you do time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting, BC8, branch chain amino acid powder, and work out and run and all that kind of shit, and my hit cardio. Uh, so look that up on the other channel, right? But side note, here's a quick side story before I get into all the delicious food I just purchased for $6 and motherfucking 20 cents, right? 
this is the shape. I didn't even get the drink, but fucking this much of it or whatever, right? This was another mango banana smoothie, whatever, from the market. And I spilled it going into the motherfucking lobby here by trying and attempting to be a fucking gentleman because there was fucking um, two ladies with a motherfucking baby stroller that I'm being shimmy holding the goddamn door open for. Even though I have like all these bags, one, two, three, I got four bags of food, motherfucking three fruit shakes, another bag with some barbecued crocodile in it I'm going to get to in a minute. So I, imagine me now. I'm laden down. I got drinks, bags, this and that. But, but, Mr. Shimmy Triple X, Shimmy's McBib, Shimmy Cash, the Habesha, hunted and stalked worldwide by the OJJDP ICAC in Indian Country and Dorian A. Peters, California Bar ID number 261863. That nigga right there. Despite all this, I still have the decency to go and hold the door open for a lady with a motherfucking baby stroller with some badass kid in it. This guy's all fucking fucked up and shit and whatever. So I'm like, let me hold the door open for this lady because she's got her hands full or whatever. I under, I'm empathetic like that, right? So in doing so, I let her go in the motherfucking door and one of my motherfucking drinks spills on the goddamn thing. So I'm like, fuck. Whatever, I can't cry over spilled milk, right? As they literally say, don't cry over spilled milk. So, fuck it, what can I do? I got a towel, went back to my fucking unit, cleaned up the mess in the hallway, doubled back to the motherfucking market, and came back with two, just because, nigga. Don't cry over spilled milk. That's a life lesson, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, as, as I love to quote Young Jeezy, you know, I'll wreck this bitch and come back in a McLaren. You know what I'm saying? It's like, whatever. Shit happens, deal with it. Okay? I can sit here and whine, oh man, my motherfucking, my goddamn shake is spilled, whatever. I got this motherfucking this. Nah, go back and get another one, nigga. That's life. Life is about making the best of uh, fuck ups. And when shit happens, go double up and go get more, nigga. So this is just a life lesson to show you on a micro. How they say on this on the motherfucking on my Canon camera there's a dial for uh got like a photograph of a flower they call they call it macro mode for like when I want to get close up and shoot motherfucking ants and shit on leaves and shit like that even on a macro motherfucking level little ass punk shit don't get to me if little shit don't get to me big shit don't get to me so I use this as an example of spilled milk. Just because a motherfucking punk ass bitch causes me to spill my shake don't mean I'm gonna go cry over it. I'm gonna go double up and go get two, three, four, five more of motherfuckers just because. Now with that said, welcome to the Shimmy Show. And I'm gonna start this episode black in Thailand and uh, show you the delicious stuff I got. You guys saw the shakes now. The fruit shakes are delicious. Uh, the lowest price I've seen them for in Thailand is about 20 bodies, right? But, um... This market, particularly, they're 25 bodies, right? If you go in the bigger city, you know, I've seen them jack up prices to 40, 50, 60. In the fucking airport, they're like 90. So the price, it varies depending on what part of town you're in, what type of clientele and people, if it's on like a main tourist street or whatever. So it is what it is, you know. But for usually from 80 cents all the way up to like $3 and some change is what they're going to cost you for one. I prefer the ones on the low end of the 80 to 60 cent range or whatever because it's the same fucking fruit. It depends on where you buy the shit at, right? So those are a great deal. Now, I got also got a whole, this was the other day, I got a whole, what do they call them, a bushel or what do they call them? I don't know, a peckle or something of bananas for 30 baht. That's like a dollar and 10 cents or some shit like that. Lots of little micro mini bananas. <laughs> now, the other thing I got tonight, barbecued crocodile, 30 baht. I've never tried it before. They cooked it on the grill. It smells delicious, actually. Looks like chicken. That's barbecued crocodile, baby. For a motherfucking 30 baht is uh, not even a dollar. It's like 90 cents or something like that. So that's on tonight's dinner plate. Put that on the plate. Bam, bam. Barbecued crocodile. I got my sushi bag here. Oh, wait, what else? No, for 10 baht, I have vegetable, or you can get these in America at most Chinese restaurants. I just got one veggie, veggie egg roll, you know, vegetarian egg roll, no chicken, whatever inside. Put that on the plate too. 
10 baht is, uh, I believe it's like 22 cents or 30 cents or some shit like that. Now, this is going to be, okay, this is the sushi bag here. I got a hookup at a sushi place. It's like only 5 baht per piece and 10 baht for the large ones, right? Let's open the container up. Look at all this delicious sushi here. Can you guys see that? Yum. Five baht each. Five, ten, fifteen. I paid thirty baht total. One motherfuck less than one motherfucking dollar for all these sushi pieces. The large one was ten baht. The rest were five. And since I'm such a good customer or whatever, I go there frequently. The motherfuckers there, they give me like a free, two free pieces every time I come. You know, wonderful. They like they they like they do all this like hip hop man shit when I come. Like bye Bob Marley, whatever. We got some free ones for you today, so. Black in Thailand is a positive thing, like fucking 90% of the time. I'm telling you, it's, uh, it is what it is. They love chocolate man when he's friendly and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? This, as long as you, you're not some just like ignorant ass motherfucking nigga and you don't, you don't like get offended by when people stereotype you into being like a motherfucking rapper or a ball player, they'll ask you, do I play basketball and shit? Even though I'm only five foot nine, you know what I'm saying? I tell them I'm a runner and this and that. But it's like, you know, just be friendly with motherfuckers. They don't know any, they didn't grow up around black people. They don't know any better. All they know is what's on TV and the fucking YouTube rap videos. So the closer you are aligned with that, or the closer you look like that to them, more power to you, brother. And you gotta use stereotypes to your advantage or whatever, in my opinion. Rather than rather than fight them, why not make the positive ones work for you? Mm -hmm. Hip hop man, rapper man. There's actually a popular show in Thailand on YouTube now called The Rapper Thailand. You know, Thai, Thai rap's actually pretty good. You know, some pretty good shit. All right, so here's getting to the more interesting stuff about the black in Thailand shit. This is not, it has nothing to do with being black, by the way. This is like food and shit, right? I bought some motherfucking fried, deep fried bugs <laughs> for 20 baht. As, uh, one of my favorite quotes from the last poets was, uh, speak, speak not of revolution until you are willing to eat rats to survive. Umar Ben Hassan. Look up some of their old shit. It's like some 1970s pre-rap poetry shit. NWA sampled a lot of their shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. As Denzel Washington said, an American gangster. And people in them streets eating them bugs and whatever. This is a fry, fried... Looks like motherfucking not cockroaches, but I think they're crickets and some kind of like larvae or some shit. Deep fried motherfucking bugs, nigga, for 20 baht. Yeah. And I'm gonna eat them too. Let's see what they taste like. I'm gonna crunch one right now. It tastes like motherfucking Cheetos, nigga. Speak not of revolution till you're willing to eat rats to survive. Shits are pretty good, nigga. Better than high fructose corn syrup, I'll tell you that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody a mango. God damn, the fruit is so sweet here. And lastly, my my favorite, my big signature dish, 60 baht. This is the most expensive thing, a large dinner sized portion of uh, seafood pad thai with uh, you know, the usual bean sprout, shrimp, lime, whatever. No chicken. I always get either seafood or veggie. This is the big size. Uh, if you guys look at my Instagram, you'll see the, the chef. He makes it right in front of you like Daniana or whatever. It's delicious. So that's my dinner there. A complete fucking dinner with like huge size portions, drinks, fruit, motherfucking almost everything except for dessert. You know what I'm saying? Um... It's great. One thing I got on my Philippines trip a couple weeks ago is uh, it was a restaurant. I suppose it was called uh, what's this burger restaurant by Walking Street? Bob, not Bob's Burger. That's a cartoon. It's called something. Some Australian place that sells burgers right next to Walking Street in Angeles City. They have like a fucking bunny on the motherfucking logo. If people know what I'm talking about. Anyway, inside the restaurant, they have great food, by the way. Inside the restaurant, it's Australian place. They have a sign that says, dessert is only stress spelled backwards. Or they're trying to ask you, you know, buy some dessert pie cake or some shit like that. So I'm not stressed. This is my dessert. And this is my, my massive $6 meal. It's good enough for two people, actually. But I'm going to consume most of the shit right now. 
And uh, yeah, food is very affordable in Thailand. It's very good, delicious. My favorite things are the fresh fruit shakes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put this one in the freezer for later. I'll, nah, I'll just cut the video now, fuck it. And go eat my food while it's still hot. Anyway, this is Shimmy from The Shimmy Show. Nice quick episode. Thanks for listening to me. This has been Black in Thailand, part number three. There'll probably be another part number four later on in the year or something, whenever I come back here and all that good shit. So um, look up the other episode and look at my other channel if you guys want to see my old show and my old uh, stories about, you know, motherfucking scooters and just shit to bring with you to Thailand and watch my exercise progress if you so care. I wasn't always as motherfucking semi-fit as I am now. You look at me a year and... You look at my video from two years ago, you'll see me doing the same motherfucking exercises, the same Chloe Ting hit cardio routine. Just realize that exercising and fitness is a process. Expect months and years for extreme results, you know what I'm saying? And uh, as long as you stick with the workout plan and keep doing it, this shit will work. It is what it is, man. So that's, that's, uh, that's my wrap-up session, black in Thailand, whatever. But yeah, oh... You gotta see how this. My question is, how does crocodile taste? I mean, in Florida they have alligator. Can you actually buy crocodile in Florida? I don't know. It might be endangered or something. Who knows? Huh. I'm not really a meat eater, but I took the opportunity since it was on the grill. It's fucking delicious, crocodile. Barbecue crocodile, people. Thirty bucks, one dollar in Thailand. Okay. Shit, that's good, man. Tasty. I'm a semi-vegetarian, but crocodile tastes good. Hey, you would eat me if it had a chance, you know? So, I got my BCAA powder with my shake and call it a wrap. Thanks for watching the Chevy Show. Good night, people. Peace out. Black in Thailand. It's all right, people.